Good morning, everybody. I'm back at SDSU, and joining me today is Mark. Thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So we're over here in the School of Design in, uh, at Grove Hall, and what is this room that we're in right now? Uh, this is the painting studio. Okay. Um, where all our uh, sections of painting are taught okay. um, and have been, I think, since 1998 we've been here um, in this, which is what is in fact a converted uh, old cafeteria. I like uh, it. In so. fact, I think that our work table in here is from that time period. And, um, but it actually it makes a nice uh, painting studio, uh, tiled floors, high ceiling, all Some works really well. Bright lighting in yep. here. Just lacking windows. windows would <laughs> you can't get everything. In South Dakota, windows are appreciated when you're stuck inside stuff. So. so tell us about yourself. What do you do? Where are you from? Like, what's your background? Um, I was born and raised, for the most part, in Watertown, South okay. Dakota. Uh, we moved to Iowa when I was 15 and uh, lived there for, I lived there for three years. And then my brother had came back here for school, uh, and he's a year older. And uh, I was at a point where I didn't really know what I was doing, so I just ended up following him here. Sure. Uh, so I have a, my bachelor's degree is from SDSU, uh, and uh, I went to graduate school down in Vermilion, and just out of uh, luck at the time I was done, there was a need here for uh, a painting, kind of painting, drawing, uh, foundations instructor. Um, and I've been here now since, or for, this is my 12th year of teaching okay. here. Uh, I teach painting, drawing, um, design, art appreciation, color. Um, for a small apartment, you get the opportunity to teach a lot of different things. Right. Uh, my main focus of my uh, own work is uh, painting, oil painting particularly, um, and my work is kind of over the, my career has ranged from, it's typically kind of in the representational world. Um, I used to do quite a bit of still life work, uh, and that's kind of slowly morphed into more kind of figurative paintings, um, but also very much representational. Sure, and this is actually one of Mark's pieces behind us here. Yes. And I think what draws me to a lot of yours is the color. Like okay. I love all the bright colors that you've had in your stuff. Because you had several smaller pieces at the faculty exhibit mm -hmm. this fall, but all with the same kind of dynamic color mm -hmm. palette, that is, which is great. So, okay, who inspired you to, to go into this? Um, I don't really think of it as a choice. It kind of is, was, inevitable. Uh, one of the jokes I make a lot of times, if I could do anything else, I would have been, you know, a banker or a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> um, and I, there were many steps in my career that I kind of wanted to leave painting behind. But, sure. Uh, it seems to me the kind of way that I operate in the world. Um, and I always remember, you know, I used to do drawings when I was a kid and illustrate books uh, that I would read. Um, my sister used to do a lot of uh, drawing, uh, and she's now an architect, and, and I always was kind of envious of, of that, uh, and kind of wanted to kind of develop my own ability to do that as a young kid. In high school, uh, well, all the way through school, I was not a very good student, uh, just generally in, in your regular kind of coursework. Um, but I found that, that art and painting were a place I could, you know, I could really engage and I felt kind of uh, activated by what was happening in the classroom as opposed to uh, other parts of school. Um, and so to me it was just kind of a very organic kind of development. Sure. Um, and that's the same thing when I came to college here. I think I started as a psychology major and I hadn't even really considered as going to school for art. Um, but then I was here and I just took a drawing class because I thought it would be a fun thing to do. Uh, and after that, I was like, well, um, it just was this kind of natural pull for me that that was uh, where I wanted to be. Sure. 
Um, and then even through that, I, I tried other majors that just never really stuck. And, sure. And so, you know, it just seems that this is the burden, as it is sometimes. <laughs> um, but, you know, that, that kind of naturally seems to be where I position myself. Um, but certainly throughout all that time, you know, I've had instructors uh, and other, you know, fellow artists that, uh, you know, become part of your community and kind of inspire you along the way. Sure. Who do you look to now? Is there a certain uh, type of art or a certain artist that you're inspired by that helps you think about the way that you create things now? Um, for me, it's, you know, I tend to work representationally and there's a lot of artists in that realm uh, that I connect with, but, um, you know, to be honest, it's not just that. There's lots of different kind of, it always, for me, it, it is painting. There's something about painting. Sure. Uh, the materials and the way you work through your ideas that also seems very much connected with me uh, in very kind of, uh, strong ways um, so most of what I'm just kind of visually attracted to is painting uh, and in fact more times than not I kind of consider myself a painter before I consider myself an artist okay it just seems for me it seems like I can grasp what a painter is okay uh, and it, I, to be honest it doesn't really make a difference but to me somehow that way of seeing it kind of makes sense to me because um, I understand paint and I get uh, paintings and so a lot of it is in that you know but there's also there's a lot of you know like Neil Rausch uh, who is a contemporary German painter uh, Gerhard Richter same thing a, a contemporary German painter uh, but going back in you know um, uh, oh let me think of some uh, I always have a real problem thinking of names oh no and it's fine it's one of those just like you know, a lot of people when they go places, they on a trip or something, mm -hmm. they specifically seek out places where there are exhibits or art things that they are in that they hope to inspire. Mm -hmm. them. And so it's just it's always fun to hear like what people are looking at to give them those kind of inspirations mm -hmm. to see this kind of thing. I uh, I mean to be honest, it's painting. Uh, when I go to a museum, the things I like are the really new stuff and the really really old stuff. I sure. like old artifacts and kind of archaeological stuff. Uh, to me, to be able to see like somebody's hand in something that was made a thousand years ago Absolutely. is really powerful. Yeah. Um, and then new kind of contemporary painting, uh, but you know, even like Philip Gustan and uh, you know, like I said, uh, Gerhard Richter uh, are you know, really big influences. But I also am very much influenced by uh, pictures in general. Part of what I'm really interested in now is the idea of, of a picture and what a picture is, okay. how it communicates. Um, and so I love looking at pictures and particularly old 35 millimeter slides. In fact, a lot of this work comes from, um, I purchased huge lots of slides sure. uh, that are other people's families photos. Uh, and use those, and to me, particularly looking at a slide in a viewer, it's a very kind of intimate uh, experience because you kind of got to look in, and then there's the light and the color that glows out of that. Um, and then the kind of uh, notion of the, the slide itself and that color that comes out of it, I think, is really. Uh, a strong kind of influence, but then also the notion that these are family photos that are discarded, right. okay. uh, that somebody really cared for them, to take them, and somebody especially in that, you know, most of these come from like the 1940s through the 1970s, uh, and not everybody was doing slide films. Sure. You had to be kind of a special photographer to do slides, okay. um, but then they inevitably kind of get discarded. Um, and then, to me, kind of bringing those back to life through a painting. But then also, there are these, I can easily group all the slides into like five or six categories. You know, there's birthday parties, there's Christmas parties, there's your vacation, uh, there's the summer uh, vacation at the lake. And everybody seems to take pictures of the same things. Sure. So to me, there it's interesting to kind of 
conceptually interweave these into one family okay. um, rather than thinking about them as all separate. And so there's these kind of interesting layers I really enjoy engaging that on. What do you look for in a slide that you say, like, this is what I, this is what I want to paint? I, a lot of those decisions I very specifically do intuitively. Okay. Um, so like I said, I have you know probably thousands of slides, and so I'll just look through them, and if one catches my eye for some reason, I'll set it aside. Uh, and usually then I'll set, you know, when I'm looking for a new painting, I'll set a few of those aside, and then I'll kind of go through them. Um, you know, something that's, uh, the other kind of level of the way I think about working is, is the idea of how, these become kind of memories and how that kind of relates to our visual memory. Okay. Uh, and so often kind of the off compositions or where the slide kind of gets a little weird uh, with the color uh, or it's kind of a, a moment that isn't important. You okay. know, it's kind of- uh, everyday. Right. Yeah. But also that, you know, maybe even the people didn't know they were getting their photo taken. Sure so that you're capturing a little bit more kind of sense of realism instead of the people kind of posing for the image. Absolutely, well. some of my favorite photography is those kind of unnoticed yeah. moments and kind of make a bigger impact. Um, so if somebody was wanting to go into this field, is there a recommendation you would have for them or a path that you would say that they should kind of aim towards to think about it? Uh, you know, so the, the important thing, and I, this is a thing we do a lot, is we, you know, students from high school come to tour and uh, often with parents, and certainly we're all aware that we are, you know, art as a particular, it's not a choice for everybody. Sure. And the challenge is it doesn't provide a clear career path. There are lots of careers within the arts, and I always tell them that I have a lot of my friends are artists and none of them are starving and they're all gainfully employed in some way or another. It's just that you need to think about very specifically about where you want to be in five years. Where do you envision yourself working? And getting students to start to think about that. Um, and, you know, being honest that, you know, I, I still couldn't live off the money I make from sure. selling painting. Sure. Uh, but I wouldn't want to. Uh, to me, the teaching is one, a, a really great way to engage uh, and get out of the studio, which can be a very kind of lonely existence. Sure. Um, and share your knowledge with other people and, you know, kind of feed off the energy of the students. But um, you really want to think about what you want to do and where you envision yourself. And that might not be the exact thing you do, but there are tangential careers that will keep you engaged in that field. So I tell students there, you might not, you know, kind of make a living off of your work, but there are lots of opportunities within the art world to build a wonderful career. Absolutely, I just had a conversation with um, a private lesson student of mine who is going to college, and she she knew she didn't want to be a teacher, like in a high school, and um, uh, she also knew that maybe she wasn't um, Carnegie Hall worthy performance level, but still loved playing and performing. And so I had found an article that talked about 89 careers you could do in what is music would be her field that are not necessarily like your traditional path. Mm -hmm. And so, and then talking about you can still have performance opportunities that aren't necessarily being like that symphony player mm -hmm. or that high school teacher but there are ways um, talking to a professor or doing your research that like an arts career is an advantage mm -hmm. uh, in a way that you're not necessarily thinking of. In high school where you think of two paths, whether you're an artist or you're a teacher and then that's it. Mm -hmm. But there are so many more opportunities out there for those that wanna keep creating in what they are passionate mm -hmm. about. I agree, absolutely. And I think uh, when I was a younger person, a student, that's one of the things that I didn't really see is how many different kind of careers there are sure. um, and different ways that you can engage uh, the art world. You know, even if you just think of a museum, you know, how many different types of skill sets there are. 
required to, to make something like that function. Uh, and so, you know, really kind of thinking about what you want to do and, you know, being somewhat realistic about that, that, uh, you know, especially coming right out of school, you're not going to all of a sudden start living off of a studio career. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you could build to that. And that's, I also say that I do have friends that make a living off of making and selling work. Sure. But they're also good at these other things like marketing and right. kind of engaging and finding opportunities that might kind of be close to what they're doing, but maybe they have to do, uh, you know, a little bit of illustration work or things like that, that they can still kind of engage in their work, but also kind of connect with the market in some way. Absolutely. So besides creating amazing works of art, what do you do? Uh, not much else. Um, to me, that's kind of it. Uh, I, I play guitar quite a bit. Um, I like to do other, uh, some woodworking, but those are all kind of, I guess if they're hobbies, they want to call them hobbies, they're sure. hobbies. Um, I don't really take any of them seriously. I don't want, uh, to me, I'm a painter and that's kind of, the thing sure. uh, I do, um, but I do have a family. I have a wife, and we have a, a small dog, Lenny, um, that uh, takes more, uh, is a wonderful distraction. And most of the things like that are I kind of focus on as a distraction. Sure. Um, and I don't put a lot of pressure on myself of being successful in any of them. So my guitar playing is mostly me but noodling. Just around. for fun. Right. Right. So if somebody wanted to go and look at the works you're creating or that you're selling, where do they go? Um, I have a website. If you just Google Mark Stemwettle, you'll get there, or it's just markstemwettle.com with okay. no dots or anything in the name. Uh, we'll get you there as well. Okay. If they want to learn more about SCSU, do they go to the School of Designs page and then look you up? Is that the easiest way to do it? That is or? the easiest way. Okay. We have uh, through the website, the SDSU website, uh, there is a Facebook page for Studio Art. Okay. Um, you know, uh, if you're interested in coming and touring, I think that's really a great opportunity to be able to sit down and chat for a while about, sure. um, you know, and once again, starting a conversation about what it is you want to do uh, are all good ways to engage. And email is mark.stemwettle at sdstate.edu. Yep, that's and we'll it. make sure we put it all down at the bottom so people can look. And if you would like to hear more about Mark, next week he is at the Art Guild. Yes. So if you want to head to the South Dakota Art Museum, 10 o'clock, right next Tuesday, I believe. I think I have to think dates wise, but I think we're yes. about that time. Uh, you can check, check out the South Dakota Art Museum's website. They do have all that information up there. We'll make sure we put a link down on the bottom. But uh, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.